Hi there team and welcome to another update on the geologic situation going on on the Reykjanes Peninsula in Iceland. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. Thanks for joining me. Today is Friday, August 9th. It's about 11.30 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time here in Idaho, about 5.30 p.m. over there in Iceland. And uh, the eruption has not begun yet, but I think everyone's on pins and needles and really expecting something to begin quite soon. I know the last couple updates we've been talking about it being imminent and but I feel like with some of the data that I'm going to show you today that we're definitely getting much closer to an eruption and at least one Iceland geologist thinks that might happen uh, today or tomorrow potentially so let's go ahead and get right to it thanks for your support of the channel um, so yeah Iceland is awaiting the next eruption we got a nice view here a nice sunny day looking to the uh, northeast uh, out towards the Sunnukur crater series. You can see the old cone here that erupted on over the May 29th eruption showing right through here. And yeah, everyone's kind of just waiting uh, for this when it might occur and exactly where it might occur. Our good friend Johan from Nature Eye is in the area as well. Let's look at the latest Met Office update. This is from today. So they came out with a new update today. Uh, pretty brief, but I think the big picture here is, again, the earthquakes. So the number of earthquakes in that area along that same trend uh, of fissures and vents that we saw over the last several eruptions that has continued. And so that, of course, means that the intrusion or eruption likelihood has increased. Remember that we've been slowly filling this magma storage zone over time, and now we've reached the point where we can watch the GPS measurements and we'll look at those in a second, um, but mainly the earthquakes are going to be the big indicator moving forward. And we're starting to see a pretty significant uptick in earthquake act activity. Basically, the system is fully pressurized. The magma is occupying essentially all the available space that it can find. And now as that magma is continuing to pressurize with gases and more influx of magma. It's pushing on those fractures, those cracks, those voids that it can find, and it's breaking rock. And that's what's creating a lot of these small earthquakes. And once we can get to the point where uh, the pressure is high enough that it can break through to the surface, find and or establish a through going path to the surface, then that will initiate the eruption. So number of earthquakes, um, almost 300 since Monday have been detected in the area. Um, all of, again, mostly small earthquakes. The uplift continues to go on. Um, and so let's look at some of the data they put out here from the Met Office. So they've got a nice map here. And I believe this shows, yeah, this is from uh, June 3rd to August 9th. So this is essentially a, I guess, a two month or so snapshot of all the earthquakes happening in the area. And you can see a good cluster here right around that vent, right around that spatter cone, that primary vent that opened up uh, with the May 29th eruption. So this again is still the most likely place for the eruption, this next eruption to take place. This is where the greatest probability lies is somewhere in here. Could be a little further south. Um, of course, that's of concern because it's much closer to uh, good end of it. Uh, these earthquakes over here, remember we formed two grobbins in this area. These are probably likely uh, related to those, you know, those weak zones uh, where those fractures and faults lie here. Uh, but we think that the magma body, which sits more or less in this area here, is going to most likely come out here, although we're all waiting to see exactly what takes place. And then over here on this side, um, we have, let's just start with this top graph here that just shows the magnitude of earthquakes that have taken place since June. So you can see relatively few earthquakes going through June. And then as we get into later July, those really start to pick up, not just in terms of numbers and frequency, uh, but the magnitudes, right? So we can see um, bigger earthquakes on this. You know, the biggest earthquakes here were around magnitude one. Now we're routinely seeing ones over one and a half and approaching magnitude two. So this is magnitude over time. And then this graph here, let me get my face out of the way. Um, I'll just put myself really small here at the bottom. This shows the total number of earthquakes for a given week. So you can see June along the bottom here. Uh, here we are on the 1st of July, the 1st to the 7th of July, maybe 15 to 20 earthquakes total during that week period. And then you can see that really ramp up heading into 
uh, this week of August. And this one's not even fully done. This goes from August 5th to the 11th. So this still has a good two more days of earthquake data to add to this bar graph here. So pretty compelling situation when we look at some of the other earthquake data sites that we've been looking at routinely. Uh, if you've looked at these quite often, like I have, you can just see here again, this shows just a 24 hour period, uh, but you can see a much more dense array and um, clustering of earthquakes than we typically see. A lot of times I pulled up this 24 hour earthquake plot and we might see two or three earthquakes total within this given region. But here we're probably seeing you know, 30, 40 or more earthquakes in this area. Again, mainly pretty small earthquakes. Um, so the magnitudes are really low, uh, but still a number of earthquakes here, a large number of earthquakes happening in this region. When we look at the last few weeks or so, so going to a little bit more uh, long-term data. So this is from August 2nd to August 9th. You can see the earthquakes happening here. Again, a, a, a nice little cluster up here uh, just to the east of the power plant in Blue Lagoon area. And then if we look at weeks past, again, you can see how much how much these have changed over time. So if we start going backwards, so now we're back. Now we're back here beginning of July. You can see there maybe, um, we'll just go with that view there. Okay, we'll go with that view. Maybe like five or six earthquakes beginning of July, uh, middle of July, ramping up a little bit, a little more significant in mid to late July. Here's late July's earthquake plot. Now we're into early August. And then finally, this last one here that runs through today. So you can see things increasing over time. And this data period still needs another uh, couple of days for it to be a full week. So the big significant trend, again, is a significant uptick in earthquake activity, uh, which we see with these this type of volcanic system. Once the magma is pressurized, it's going to start fracturing more rock. Uh, the big question, of course, is how much more you know, an increase in earthquakes, how much more will we see of that before we actually get to some more significant event? GPS data looks largely the same. The uplift continues, although in some cases it's kind of dropped and, and stabilized a little bit depending on which GPS plot you're seeing. Again, that's pretty typical as well uh, for the uplift and the inflation to slow down a little bit as we creep closer and closer to the eruption uh, taking place. Looking at just a couple other ones of these. Yeah, a little hard to say, but I mean, generally the, the trend continues here. So I think the earthquakes are the biggest, um, the, the most indicative um, data we have right now. And that's the one I'd probably watch the most along with the webcams. It's probably not a bad idea um, if you're really into this sort of thing to just you know have a webcam on or check one time to time. Uh, this would be where you might see that happening first. But before we get the magma to the surface and visible on the webcam, we would of course need to see it breaking through to the surface and we'd need to see a little bit of an uptick and clustering of those earthquakes both in space and time. Uh, the other thing we have here is evacuation routes. So they've re-established uh, some of the evacuation routes and defined those for the area. So here's uh, Grindavik down here at the bottom. And you can see these green area areas. So depending on which kind of neighborhood or part of town you're in, uh, they've just clearly designated for the people living and working there which way they should try to exit town if and when that eruption begins. Uh, these roads are closed here through this area. Uh, if people are up at the Blue Lagoon area here, they have an evacuation route for them. So here's a little closer view of the Grindavik area. And again, you can see these evacuation routes with these big green arrows. So basically east and west of town, those are gonna be your two primary routes. Uh, again, we're not expecting, or our least likely scenario is events opening up in town or behind the, the defensive barrier, although that is a possibility. Um, but even if we have that eruption further to the north, we could still have lava approaching the town and people needing to evacuate. Here's the evacuation area for um, the power plant area. So you can see, um, looks like they've got people, either heading north or south. You've got two different evacuation routes that are possible there for visitors and folks at the Blue Lagoon and then at Svartsingi also. So some different options shown there. 
And then finally, with this update, the last thing um, is this article that Amanda Joe sent me, um, which has some quotes from Professor Thorlerson. And kind of interesting, don't know how much of this might have been translation, so I don't want to read into it too much. Uh, so I'll read it, a little bit of it in English, but realize it's been translated from Icelandic, and so we don't know uh, some of the context and such might be uh, somewhat lost in translation. So high probability of an eruption in the next two days. Um, he does not think there's a risk of it starting inside Gudindavik, even though lava can flow there. That's things we've talked about in the past. Um, and then here he talks about, and this is a quote, the amount of magma that is accumulated is approaching what it was before the last eruption. Looking forward, it will take two to three days for it to reach the same level. This could mean that it will start erupting on August 10th, which is tomorrow. Uh, today's August 9th. And so um, he doesn't know that, of course, but just again, looking at the data, uh, he's just making that possible projection there as to when that might take place. But um, he also downplays, as he has in the past a little bit, the chance of any eruption taking place in Gudindavik, um, which makes sense. I think we're most likely to see an eruption in the areas where we've seen many of the prior eruptions and a vent opening up in the town itself uh, would 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 be need to be preceded by significant earthquake activity in that region and is something we haven't actually seen before with this uh, recent round of eruptions taking place. So I'll put a link to this um, if you're interested in it. Um, but he basically says it's a very strong probability to erupt in the next few days. Then it will start slowly for one to two or three hours. Then it will kind of die down. Um, no chance of an eruption occurring within the town borders, although the lava can go there because that's the downhill direction. Um, anyway, so interesting stuff there as always. So uh, I'll wrap this up now, but uh, we'll be keeping tabs on this, of course. Johan is in the area hoping to maybe do a drone flight if and when that eruption takes place. So I will try to be as responsive as I can with getting you information as we look forward. Again, this could be literally minutes after I finish posting this update, could be days, could still be a few weeks away. No one knows for sure, but all the data seems to indicate that we are, are heading and creeping ever closer to another eruption here on the Reykjanes Peninsula. So thanks again for your support and your time, and we'll see you next time. Take care.